This video is in response to proportional responses video dealing with the question, if you were told by God and you were commanded to denounce the Holy Spirit, would you or would you not? Because technically, in both situations, damned if you do, damned if you don't, is the question or is the whole moral story behind this uh, conundrum, moral conundrum. In the beginning of the video, he asks, is God the base of, of morality? Are morals in existence and is God just pointing these out or uh, are they actually made by God? Is God actually intervening in them? Well, the best way I know how to answer this is the Old, Old Testament. Throughout the Old Testament, God is basically saying, you know what? People are too stupid to know for themselves, therefore I'm going to intervene. Uh, one person was commanded to kill a son, God intervened and said, no, you must not. Uh, in other instances, even in the Old Testament, things are allowed to happen, uh, even with God's stern warning to see how people would behave or react in a situation. And I'm talking about, of course, the uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. In that instance, it's questionable whether or not God actually specifically intervened or... Um, not necessarily intervened, I mean, whether or not he actually had the power to intervene and he didn't uh, for the reasons that he was just trying to test out whether or not people would actually heed his warning or uh, believe, in, believe in him. So, in that instance, it's pretty relativistic and it seems pretty... It seems interesting because the New Testament, they say, well, God doesn't have a hand in all affairs. He might show miracles once in a while, but he doesn't really have a hand in things. He does not really intervene. He's not going to put his hand out to prevent somebody from dying. So basically, the Old Testament, the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament, in my eyes, is that in the Old Testament, God does actually specifically intervene, and after God sends his son to earth, basically, he doesn't really intervene because people at that point are given free will for some reason only after 2,000 years he was giving people free will before that he wasn't really giving people free will and is interfering in human affairs therefore after the New Testament the deist before the New Testament theist and if if that's true I don't see why anybody would be a theist at this point uh, living today and still call themselves properly a Christian or properly a uh, theist Anyways, aside from all that, the question, the basic more, a question of whether or not if you were told by God to denounce the Holy Ghost, to denounce the Holy Spirit, would you or would you not? The best way I know how to answer this question is if you consider the Holy Ghost, the Holy Trinity, uh, as part of the Holy Trinity, and the Holy Trinity is God, like the Catholic, Catholic doctrine dictates, not necessarily the... Protestant view, but if that's how you see it, I think any Christian would question the source, question or whether or not that really is the voice of God. Because if that's true, you're basically having to go against the first commandment. Disobedience to God basically is the, the crime you would commit and you would go to hell if you uh, didn't do it. I understand that, but also... God himself would not deny himself. So in that regard, I don't think it would be a Christian God that would be asking this. And it might even be the devil. But one thing is for sure, it wouldn't be the Christian God that would be asking this question in the first place. And that's the best way I can argue that point. Are you going to avoid hell? Probably not. But remember the... Hell is a place for punishment. It's for eternal punishment for wrongdoing. I don't see why God would punish somebody after telling them what to do in that regard. Again, hell is a place for punishment, so why would he punish you for doing something that he told, specifically told you to do? So it, I really don't uh, understand if uh, that's... I don't really understand if that's uh, actually part of the equation or not, but, I mean, that's how I'd look at the situation. 
But another thing is, well, if everybody is a sinner, doesn't everybody go to hell? Uh, that's a basic pre premise. Uh, that's a basic question that I always had for Christianity. Is it's you know they keep on saying, well, everybody's a sinner. It's like, well, doesn't everybody go to hell if everybody's a sinner? You know, if you if you violate one of the Ten Commandments, and the Ten Commandments, as I understand it, are in stone. They are the ones that you must not break. Everything else is kind of like a suggestion, more of a more or less a moral guide to what God said. But the Ten Commandments you must not break. And I don't know a single person, unless they're maybe uh, mentally handicapped or a, is a social deviant of some sort, that they haven't thought of lust. If you thought yourself in lust, you are guilty of that sin. So technically, anybody who's thought of sex has been guilty of that so in that regard i don't see how anybody couldn't be a sinner for one and number two i don't see how they couldn't go to hell if they're if that uh if that is an unbreakable rule that god commanded us to all follow so it's impossible as christopher hitchens says it's an impossible situation you you come from a piece of dust or a clot of blood and you're born in sin there's no way to get it but if you believe in me if you believe in the christian god there might be a chance for salvation, but I don't understand how that could possibly be if we're all sinners. But anyways, I hope this is a satisfactory response, and I'd like to give a shout-out to Amy in England, and I would also like to give a shout-out to Gabby, because she's been asking for one for quite a while. So thank you, and please subscribe.